Investing and trading should be simple. In this video, I'm going to share the three things that I focus on when I'm trading in stocks and options. Now, these three things are in no particular order. They're all equally important. However, some of them are more important when you're trading in stocks as compared to trading options, and I'll let you know which ones those are. The first thing I focus on, especially when it comes to options, is the technicals. And I like to look at multiple different time frames. Here you see four different time frames. And the top left is the minute chart, the top right is the hourly chart, the bottom left is the daily chart, and the bottom right is the weekly chart. And then I also, on occasion, like to consider the monthly chart. But let's go back to these shorter time frames. Now starting at the top left, we see the minute chart. I mainly use the minute chart when I'm looking to enter a new option trade. Now what I'm looking for in this minute chart is whether the stock is in a bullish trend or a bearish trend. If I'm looking to sell a cash secure put option or a bullish put credit spread and the stock is going down, then I won't be in as big of a hurry to sell that put option. I'll try and get a better price. However, if the stock is going up on this minute chart, I'm looking to sell a cash secure put option, then I'll be more inclined to try and get that order filled sooner rather than later so the trade doesn't get away from me. I also consider the top right chart, which is the hourly chart. Is that chart in a bullish or bearish trend? Now that one is not as important as the next two, which is the daily and weekly chart, but I do consider the hourly chart when I'm entering new trades or looking to roll current positions. The most important chart to me when it comes to trading options is the bottom left chart, which is the daily chart. What I like to see in this chart is that the stock is in a nice bullish pattern overall. So that means it's making higher highs and higher lows. Or I like to see that it's reaching an area that has previously served as support for it multiple times. If that's the case, then I want you to sell some new cash or put options against the stock. And here you see the charts of C and C. Notice the white line I've drawn here on this daily chart. Notice that multiple times we see that it's come down to this area right at this upward sloping trend line. Overall, these lows from these different waves are going higher. I've now drawn a second line on the top of this trading channel. Notice that the highs from each wave tend to be going higher. That tells us that CNC is overall in a nice bullish trend on this daily chart. Then I like to look at the bottom right chart, which is the weekly chart. And I'll zoom in here so we can get a little better look at what's going on. And notice that again, we see that it's in a nice bullish trend. It's making higher highs and higher lows. So the lows from each wave are higher than the previous one, and the highs from each wave are higher than the previous one as well. Also looking down here at the bottom in the volume section, we see that over the past several months, there's been nice green strong candles. That means that for these weekly candlesticks, the buyers have definitely been in control. Overall, CNC looks like it's in a nice uptrend. So those are the main charts I look at when I'm selling options. And I also consider them when I'm buying stocks outright, but I don't worry so much about the shorter time frames. I'm more concerned with the longer time frames. That would include the weekly chart down here on the bottom right, as well as the monthly chart, as you see here. Notice that overall CNC is in a nice uptrend on this monthly chart. Again, these monthly candlesticks are making higher highs highs and higher lows. Here you see the lows going back in 2019 were lower than they were in 2023. And the highs from 2018 were lower than the highs from a couple of years ago back in 2022. So overall, CNC looks like a stock that is a nice uptrend on almost every time frame. This is definitely a stock I'd be willing to sell options in if earnings weren't approaching. The reality is you probably won't find that many stocks that are trading as nice, clearly defined patterns as CNC here. All of its current time frames that I look at are all looking pretty bullish but typically some of the timeframes will not be as bullish as other ones. So you're just doing the best you can. You're trying to put the odds in your favor as much as possible. Now, the second thing I focus on when I'm trading in stocks and options is I like to see companies that are consistently growing their revenue, growing their income, and overall growing their net income. We do trade in some cyclical companies, which their net income does tend to go up and down, but overall we like companies that are consistently showing higher and higher revenue, higher and higher net income, and consistently running a very profitable business. Now, I know income statements, balance sheet, cash flow statements, they can seem boring, but they can help you get a glimpse behind the curtain to see what's going on with the overall business. Here we're looking at the income statement for CNC, and notice here it's total revenues. Now, the far right, that's the revenues from 2014, and the far left, that's the revenues from 2023. So overall, we see a nice uptrend in its total revenue. We see something similar in its operating income. We see overall that its operating income is generally going up year over year. Now we get to net income. Notice that overall over the past 10 years, we're seeing overall a nice increase in net income. However, we do see that over the past three years, net income did drop in 2021 and 2022 from the year before it. But in 2023, we said net income is back higher than it was at any other point over the past 10 years. So overall, I like what I'm seeing here with net income. 
Now I've switched over to CNC's cash flow statement. Cash flow is important. You have to have cash flow to survive, not only in your household, but a business has to have cash flow also. I've scrolled down to cash from operations. Again, notice that overall we see a nice uptrend. We said cash flows from operations are going up over time. Again, it's a little bumpy when you go back to 2014 through 2019. But over the past four years, we see that cash flow from operations is nice and high and appears to be overall increasing. So those are just a few of the metrics I look at when I'm evaluating a company. You want to spend a little more time than what I just did, but I wanted you to see some of the important things I look at when I'm looking to trade in a new company. I also check these periodically from time to time to make sure a company is continuing to perform the way that it was when I initially did my research. Basically, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to make sure that we're trading in a solid, mature, consistently profitable company that tends to overall, over the long run, have increasing net profit and increasing revenue. The third main thing I focus on when I'm trading in stocks and options in a company is I like for the company to be at worst fairly valued, or even better, I like for it to be undervalued in my opinion. That means I'm trading in a company that should overall, long term, the stock price be pulled up as it tries to reach its fair value. But how do we do that? Well, you could do the research yourself, but if you'd like to kind of hit the easy button, check out the benefits of becoming a patron because every weekend I share with my patrons some stocks I believe are either fairly valued or potentially undervalued based on where they're trading at in the long-term fundamentals. But if you choose to do it yourself, here are some of the things you kind of want to look for. I'm on Seeking Alpha and I'm under the Valuation tab, Grade and Metrics. And what we're looking for here is whether the stock is trading at a discount compared to where it normally trades based on various metrics. For example, in this top line, look at the PDE for non-GAAP. Now notice that CNC is currently trading at 11.82, but its five-year average is 13.68. So overall, it's trading at a 13.57 discount compared to where it's been trading over the past five years. That looks interesting. Let's go on down this column. Notice that as we go on this column, most of these metrics show us that CNC is trading below its five-year average. I do look at its five-year average. However, I also like to look at where it's trading at compared to its 10-year average, 15, 20, and sometimes even longer averages based on various metrics. This helps you see if it's trading at an overall discount for where it normally trades at. And just to pick another one here, here we see price to sales. We see that again, it's trading at a discount of about 12.56%. We see this repeated in almost every column where it's trading under its five-year average. Now, personally, I'd want to check those other time frames, but this looks like an interesting opportunity. I then like to look at what analysts are forecasting for the future because we're not paid on what the company did before or paid on what it will do in the future. So we'd like to see if analysts think this company will continue with this trend that it's in, in which case this gap should close over time. Now, how long could that take? Well, it could take days, weeks, months, or it could take years. So you just want to trade and plan accordingly. So is CNC a good company to trade stocks and options in? Is it a good one to buy some stock outright or to trade bullish options in? Well, only you can decide that for yourself. But for me, it does look interesting and it is worthy of being researched a little further. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Unless you're working in a job that you absolutely love, most people want to retire, quit their job as soon as possible. In the video at the link above and the description below, I share the fastest possible way I know to live off dividends. So if you're interested, please check it out. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.